What's up dogs, Theody here, and in the last part we learned about auras or line of sight. Except we didn't cover circles because circles are honestly a little bit more complicated. I mean after all, there's a whole math dedicated for circles. Pre-calculus. But worry not, we don't have to know any sorts of pre-calc in order to work with circles for this video. And the main reason for that is because our circles are more pixelated. They're not that perfect arc that you would see or use in math class. So we're not going to be using any sorts of pi, we're not going to be using any crazy equations. What we will be using instead are rules of right triangles, aka Pythagorean theorems. Although technically speaking, it's just the Pythagorean theorem, not theorems. <laughs> So just like in the last video, I already created this and tested it out to see that it works. So if you're just interested in the code, then it will be in my blog that's linked down in the descriptions or the comments. So you could just copy and paste it through there. But for those of you who are more interested in learning how or why this works, then continue watching. So kind of like how I was noting in the intro, how the circles aren't exactly perfect because they are pixelated. So instead what we're going to get is jagged arcs as opposed to perfect arcs. So this is more something you'll see in your typical math class, a circle and a coordinate grid. In their origin, being over here, is assigned as 0, 0. Well, it's very similar over here in RPG Maker. And by the way, we're going to be using this bigger circle over here, for example. And this spot here is our point that is 0, 0. Now, for the most part, it's pretty obvious. But the more and more you'll look at this, the more and more you'll start to be a little bit confused. Because that means that this entire vertical line is our y-axis and this is our x-axis and I know that RPG Maker says that over here is 0, 0 and as we go lower and to the right it increases in positive value but just for simplicity's sake and so that everything is more common knowledge we're gonna say that this spot is 0, 0 so that would mean that this spot over here is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 0 and this spot up here is 0 5 so very similarly with our real circle and I'm just going to change a color so that's easier to see over here is 5 0 up here is 0 5 so let's assume that this is the player and just like in the previous video when we test to see if the player is in the aura of the event, what we're actually doing is taking the difference of the X and Y between the player and the event and testing if it's within these values. But of course, when we're going here, 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 or here, that value in X and Y will change, right? But check this out. Have you guys known something yet? And what if I were to show it like this? Well, we created right-sided triangles. And we know that the length of the hypotenuse is the radius. So this side will always be 5, this side will always be 5, and this side will always be 5. And for those of you who know the Pythagorean theorem, you'll know that a squared plus b squared equals c squared which is denoted based on this figure so this is our c squared this can be a squared and this can be b squared so if we know that c will always equals 5 we can test the value of a or b by assuming the other letter and this is very possible because we are working with very very small or finite values we can actually go through a loop where we assign x to equals 1 x to equals 2 3 4 and then 5 and go through the Pythagorean theorem to solve for our y so let's take the example of x equals 3 
So based on our picture here, A is our Y and B is our X. So we know that C is and will always equals 5 and B currently equals 3 because that's the assumed value that we're going with. 3. Then it's this equation here and we just plug in the values. And I got a value of A equals 4. So let's actually check that out. So B equals 3 and A equals 1, 2, 3, 4. Sweet, it works. Now let's test it out one more time with A equals 4. And I'm going to create a new sheet just so we're working out with something nice and clean. So A will equals 3. Testing that out. 1, 2, 3. Cool. Now let's try 2. So now this is where it will get tricky because 21 is not a perfect square. So what I'm going to do is pop out my calculator, 21, and square it. And you'll see that we got some weird, weird number. 4.5 a do 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 da But of course, in RPG Maker, we have full size tiles, and we can't exactly split up a tile at all, at least not in this default configuration. So, what I'm going to do in a set is just round. If it's 0.5 or greater, round up. If it's less than that, round down. So, obviously, this number will round up to 5. So, add 2. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Ta -da! Now you can probably imagine that there is one issue with this and that's when x equals 5 because once b equals 5 and c equals 5 then when we punch it in here it's just going to cancel each other out and a will equal 0 which does make sense being 5 0 but you're going to notice that with circles um, there's of course a little bit more space involved than well than what we just said y should be equaling 2 in this case but mathematically it doesn't but here's something neat that we can do what if when the difference in the y becomes greater than the difference in the x we just solve for the x instead of solving for the y so what i mean here is instead of saying that hey, we know what x equals, let's pretend we don't know what x equals, and instead we know what y equals, which is 2. And I'm going to put it in this small corner, and I changed the color to green, so that's a little bit more easier to see. So a will equals 2, which is the y, c will equals 5, and when I put it into the equation to solve, it's going to be 25 minus 4, which is the square root of 21, and we already solved it up here, and that's when we got that weird decimal number, and we rounded it up to 5. Recall over here, square root of 21, 4.5, we're going to round up. So if y is 2, then we're going to get x of 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. So it actually works out. It's a strange phenomenon that occurs once we test past half of the value that we are testing with. So if we're continuing with the schematic of radius of 5, as long as x is less than half of it, so less than 2.5, then we can continue to use x and solve for y. But the moment it passes that threshold, we'll instead assume that we know the value of y and solve for x. And we denote this by using this top conditional branch here which will test to see which is greater the difference in x or the difference in y and as you can see from the previous video we are again using the math.absolute value so we do not have to worry about being behind or in front of the event and then in the next conditional branch assuming that the difference in x is less than the difference in y 
We're next going to test if the difference in x is less than or equal to our radius. In this example, the radius is 2. So this condition here is actually using this circle here. So as long as the player is within two spaces in regards to the x where you see my mouse, then that will actually check off. And then it will check the y-axis and go through that Pythagorean theorem input. So where you see here in the difference of y, well, that difference in y is actually our value a. And then on the other side of that equal sign, it's going to do math.round. So if it's 0.5 or greater, it's going to round up. Below 0.5, it's going to round down. And then you're going to see the square root, math.square. Now, JavaScript has a unique system when doing exponentials where it has to call the function of math.pow or math.power. So here's our c, our radius, going to the second power, subtracting the b value, our x value that you see here. And now that I look at it, I can actually remove the math.absolute because as we all know, anything that gets squared becomes a positive number. So here we are, math.power, difference in x being squared. So that's our Pythagorean theorem. And if that happens, then it's going to be in Gun Aura. And then this one works the exact same way, except it just flips the variables. So because the difference in x is now greater than the difference in y, we're instead going to solve for the x having known the y. And again, I can remove that absolute value. So wherever I step inside the circle, I should get a text box that says, hi. Hi, 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 hi. <laughs> Ta-da, it works. It works, it works, it works. <laughs> now I'm just gonna drag him and toss him into this bigger circle so you guys got a better example because that was what we were basing it off of earlier. Control R to run. All works out. Now I will admit that there is one error that we can't exactly go around. He has a blind spot. And it's just at these corners when he's not saying hi. Admittedly speaking, I don't know why it's like that, but in my opinion, it's not all that bad to have these small spots as blind spots. But what you can do is that if you're really interested, you can add in a, a conditional branch that will test for these spots, which is 2, comma, 4. My assumption is that this will only occur with perfect squares. So if you have ORs of 4, 9, 16, 25, so on and so forth. But as you can see from this or this being 5, it's honestly huge. You know, I wouldn't really imagine you to have an or that's greater than 5. Maybe 4 10 will tend to be your limit. And this isn't too bad, but everything else will work out just perfectly fine on the algorithm that I created. So there we have circles. Again, it's a little bit more complicating. As I mentioned, there's a whole math dedicated for just circles. So it's okay if you're a little bit confused. Just feel free to watch the videos a couple of times and especially feel free to ask questions. I'm here to help you guys. It's weird that squares of perfect circles have that blind spot. But again, if you do want to test for it, it's a very, very easy fix which I guess isn't even all that hard to put into terms. You could just do 
if the difference in x is equal to radius divided by 2, then if the difference of y is less than the radius, you're inside the circle. Bam! Figured it out on the spot, just like that. See? Very easy. If you're interested, all the copy and paste code is in the description, so feel free to check it out. Auras are really cool. Circles are a little bit complicated and totally a pain to the point that maybe a plugin might be more worth it than to do it this way. But let me just tell you guys that if you do take the time to learn and understand this sort of math that's involved, you're just opening up a whole new world of development because it's it's honestly a very magnific magnificent tool to have. I love using RPG Maker for these complex and complicated stuff because people who don't use RPG Maker or who just scratch the surface of RPG Maker doesn't even know that this sort of thing is possible. And when people play your game, they're gonna be completely blown away to see that this sort of thing is possible with RPG Maker. And it's exactly the sort of things that I love to do with the game I'm currently creating. It's a puzzle horror game called Caster's Trap. If interested, you can follow the development vlogs here on the channel or check out the Instagram for some little snippets or pictures if that's your preferred source of medium. Thank you guys so much for watching. A like would be very, very much appreciated if you enjoyed. And I'll see you in the next one. Till then, later!